Federal Reserve says that interest rates will likely remain unchanged for the foreseeable future. Minutes from the May FOMC meeting revealed this week that the Federal Reserve uh, is committed to a quote-unquote patient policy stance. The Fed uh, does seem optimistic about the economy, with officials raising expectations for full-year economic growth. Joining me right now to talk more about that and its impact on markets is the Bonson Group founder, managing director, and author of Dividend Growth. David Bonson is here. Great to see you, David. Thanks so much for being here. Good to be with you. So you also are not expecting a sharp sell-off in terms of the economy. I'm talking about that 3.2 percent economic growth that we saw in the in the first quarter. You think that can stay? Are you in step with what the Fed said this week? I am. And so I start off being one of these real supply side believers in the corporate tax reform bill. I didn't believe and don't believe that it was ever a sugar high, that it was transitory, that you got a 2017 or 2018 kick and then it goes away. I think that there's last and positive impact to what that means for business investment in our country. So therefore, I'm optimistic about the ability for it to continue expanding economic growth. All right. The concern I have is that that could be interrupted if the trade war ends up being more prolonged. Yeah, and that's what I want to talk about because we got more signals this week that this fight between the U.S. and China is not going away anytime soon. I mean, this seems like we're going to be here for the long haul. A number of Wall Street firms like Goldman Sachs, uh, as well as Nomura, Bank of America, uh, J.P. Morgan, all among those are, that are rewriting their forecast because they're basically saying, look, we're in this for the long haul. We may very well see that remaining $325 billion in, in Chinese goods that come into America every year. That's also going to be taxed. And then the fight gets accelerated. It, well, it sure would. And I don't think that the markets have priced in that. Some of the, the Wall Street firms are now starting to base in the possibility of that. And you have to recalibrate those expectations. However, the $325 billion right now is not what the market's expecting to see, those additional tariffs. Even the 10% to 25% move, I think the market's underpriced the economic impact from it. Because even though it's been announced and it's in motion, the fact of the matter is that there's still a chance they could peel that back. It doesn't really kick in into the summer months. And I think the market is hopeful that there will be some sort of resolution. But day by day, tweet by tweet, mm. it looks less likely that well, we're going to get a short-term fix. Well, put, put China aside for a second. We also got signals this week that the global economy is showing weakness, especially in Europe. Now, for a little while, I thought Europe was, was bouncing and it was bouncing off of the bottom. But we got the purchasing managers indexes yeah. this week. And the one in Germany, the PMI, basically, you know, looks at manufacturing in Germany. And it it fell below the 50 level, which obviously is contraction, not growth. Yeah. What's your take about that? Well, I was not one who was buying into the idea that maybe Europe was starting to kind of show a little sign of life. Okay. I think that ultimately the European banking system is dead. It's a zombie banking system, and it's being held alive by the European Central Bank. The 1999 move to euro currency was a failure. Mm. And they can, I can't trade this, uh, uh, nor do I think most investors should even try because they can kick this can for decades. Mm. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that there is no growth in any of Europe and there is negative growth in most of Europe. Yeah, and, and but by the way, the PMI was also negative in Japan. Yeah. The president said he's working on a free trade agreement with Japan. So let's stay domestic for a second, David. Sure. How do you invest in this uncertainty around China? USMCA, the, the NAFTA 2.0 deal, if Nancy Pelosi brings it to the floor, we'll get a vote. It probably will pass if she brings it to the floor, but we don't know if she can bring it to the floor. So there's that uncertainty. Tell me how you're allocating capital. Yeah, so I really am recommending to clients this kind of, it almost sounds like you're hedging because you're saying you can't get overly pessimistic. Any of the things that warrant caution, are you can't overdo, and you certainly can't get overly optimistic. It's a great time for a more balanced and moderated view, even weight to one's own strategic allocation, which is going to mean different things to different investors. But we believe that there is plenty of reason to stay long the stock market as long as you're in right, the right spots. We don't want to be an index investor at this point. We want things that have some un, that are undervalued, underappreciated, and then ourselves being dividend growth investors. The free cash flow generators are holding up very well. And the more they're sharing with investors, the better they're performing. That's where we think people want to be. The energy sector is a great example. Whenever a China deal gets 
done, U.S. energy industry is going to be a beneficiary. Energy industry is deeply undervalued, has been for some time, and you're getting paid while you wait. There's great dividend growers within that sector. That's an example of something we like to put our, our money into right now. I love that you focused on dividend growers in the book. Congrats on that. Thank you. Uh, people want regular income. David, it's great to see you. Great to be with you. Thank you so much. David Bonson joining us there. Don't go anywhere.